Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, God bless you. Welcome to another video. This is Teddy here, Teddy3 in DC. This video is very, very specific. Um, <laughs> normally I don't read straight from the Quran, but today I'm going to read straight from the Quran. And then I'm going to explain the importance of what we're reading. Bear in mind that this is, very, this is not only specific verses of the Quran, but it's also for a specific person. To message delivered to this person because I see a strong belief in this person and I want to allow this person to, to understand why I have the views that I have and understand exactly where they come from and exactly where they say it in the Quran like not a whole bunch of I as to say in this and this and this and this and this and then I just kind of throw some stuff out there some information some some reason, some rationalization. No, I don't. That, none of that, none of that is important. Earlier in one of my videos, I talked about my method of going after the Quran, or about uh, researching and reading. And I've told everyone that every time I do salat, either before, sometimes before and after, and every night and every morning, I'm reading the Quran, alhamdulillah, and I'm reminded all the time of very specific points. Anybody, any of you, anybody, wallahi, anybody that can deny what I'm going to read now needs to, needs to question whether they really think the Quran is sufficient. Not just that. Anybody who can accept the Hadith after this reading, after, and it's going to break it down so finely, anybody, anybody who can accept this after this, needs never to talk to me ever if you can accept hadith after if you watch this video if you accept hadith after listening to what i'm going to read to you you might as well never talk to me ever again now this is not to be closed off this is not to be judgmental this is not even to be i'm not being reckless in my words right now i'm choosing them very specifically I'm thinking about this one person, but this applies to everyone. I'm being very cautious lately of the friends that I keep and the life that I cho I'm choosing to live. And if you can, after hearing this message from Allah, if you can, after hearing this message from the Prophet Muhammad, if you can, after hearing this message from someone that you know is being truthful to you, as a friend to you, as an ally to you, as a believer, Inshallah, if you can hear this and you can still accept that, me and you aren't ever going to see eye to eye unless Allah guides us to that. And then once we're guided to that and what, then once we're equal, once we are considered, once we're on the same level again, then and only then will I accept our friendship. Either I'm going to have to deny or you're going to have to believe. One of the two. Otherwise, if you call yourself Muslim, after this and you can still go and read the hadith and say you're going to follow the words of men do that but do not say that this message did not come to you do not say you weren't warned i bear witness of allah six surah 1-12 we're going to start here. We have permitted the enemies of every prophet, human, and jinn devils to inspire in each other fancy words in order to deceive. Had your Lord willed, they would not have done it. You shall disregard them and their fabrications. That is so the hearts of those who do not believe the in the hereafter will listen to it. And they accept it. And they will take of it what they will. Shall I seek other than Allah as a judge when he has sent down to you this book sufficiently detailed? Those to whom we have given the book know it is sent down from your Lord with truth. So do not be of those who have doubt. 
The word of your Lord has been completed with truth and justice. There is no changing his words. He is the hearer, the knower. If you obey the majority of those on earth, they will lead you away from Allah's path. That is because they follow conjure. And that is because they only guess. All praise be to Allah. That was a sixer from 112, 113, 114, 115, and 116. I just want to read one more, one more ayah, one more ayah. I'm going to skip all the way to 6, 120. Leave what is openly a sin as well as what is discreet. Those who earn sin will be punished for what they have taken. Let's, let's, let's understand. Let's analyze this. Because without analysis, there's no reason. Without thinking, without, without acknowledging Allah, without coming to grips with the message that we're given, there's no reason to even ponder the message or read it in the first place. If you're not going to listen to this, if you're not going to try to understand if you're not going to try to take heed to this, if you're not going to accept the Quran, if you're not going to accept belief in Allah, what are you going to accept? Let's go down this ayah by ayah. 112, 6, 112. We have permitted the enemies of every prophet, human and jinn devils, to inspire each other to fancy words in order to deceive. All right. We have permitted the enemies of every prophet, Every prophet has enemies. We've seen that in the Quran. There's no hardship from any prophet. There is no prophet in the Quran that is free of hardship. Human and jinn devils to inspire each other to fancy words in order to deceive. So clearly, they're inspiring each other. They're, they're, they're giving feedback. They're growing in their disbelief. And they're, they're producing something that continues to allow them to deceive each other and to be deceived. And to deceive others into, into disbelief. Had your Lord willed, they would not have done it. You shall disregard them in their fabrications. We hear countless times in the Quran that Allah, if Allah wills, he would have made us all one nation. If Allah willed, he would not have let us believe, um, disbelieved. But we decide what we want to do. We decide what we want to do, and Allah allows us to go in that route. He's allowed them to do it, because Allah, Allah gives them all choice. He gave all the jinn and mankind choice, and they continually go astray. You shall disregard them and their fabrications. Disregard them and their fabrications. Ah, why is this important? Let's continue. It's, this is important because of this, 113. That is so the hearts of those who do not believe the hereafter will listen to it. And they, and they will accept it. And they will take of it what they will. Three things. The disbelievers, the, the whole reason for you, for, for anybody to create anything after this book of Allah is so that the disbelievers will accept some of it. So that they, let's see, so that the disbelievers may turn, so that they do accept it, and so that they, and so that they will be able to choose what they want. If you have hadith, this is all hadith, if you have hadith, if you say you can distinguish between the sahi ones, the, the strong ones and the weak ones and the kind of sorta and the good ones and a, you, you're choosing what you want there. And if you're not choosing, you're allowing somebody else to choose for you. You can't say I accept some hadith and I don't accept the other ones because you still accept the science of it, which automatically makes you a hypocrite. It makes you a disbeliever. If you can disbelieve in one hadith, you disbelieve in all of them. But if you accept some of them, then you're saying that, you, and you say that you need them. Even if you say they're not from Allah, I don't even care. I don't even care anymore. I'm tired of even dealing, I'm tired of messing around with these words. If you accept Hadith, you're saying that Allah did not complete the book. Wait, what does the Quran say? In quotes, shall I seek other than Allah, other than Allah as a judge, when he has sent down to you this book sufficiently detailed? Those to whom we have given the book know it is sent down from your Lord with truth. So do not be of those who have doubt. If you accept, Allah is talking about Hadith here. And he's talking about the Jews and the Christians as well. Because they both have their Hadith. Jesus came with the Injil. He came with his, 
He came with the words inspired to him by Allah. From the time he was a baby, he knew exactly what to say. He's come to be a, he's come to be a messenger of Allah, and he submits his will to Allah. Moses said the same thing. Moses' people, the Jews, they went astray while he was there. When he passed away, guess what? Pharisees, Sadducees, you guys are going to listen to us. We have the oral Torah. You have to follow our guidance because we are the truthful ones. <laughs> Give me a joke. Give me a break. Then Jesus comes around. He's like, these guys are a joke. Let's clean the temple of these people. Let me teach you the way that Moses taught you. Let me teach you the message of the oneness of your creator. Let me bow down to the creator. I'm just a man. Yes, I'm a man inspired, but I'm just a man. Then what happens? Paul comes out. He's like, hey, Jesus, man, and Jesus came to save you from your sins. You were born into sin. This crap, this oral Torah and this oral message, this good news. Not Jesus' good news. <laughs> the culmination of Jesus' efforts mixed with falsehood and false attribution to the man that we are all to look up to. Both of them, Moses and Jesus. And then the, then the Muslims come around. They get this beautiful Quran, this beautiful Quran that led them from the dark ages of hypocrisy and jahiliyyah. Hypocrisy and disbelief. Hi hypocrisy and ignorance. And they are led to the promised land. And then they forget it. <laughs> Give me a break. Shall I seek other than Allah as a judge when he has sent down to you this book, this book sufficiently detailed? Those to whom we have given the book know it is sent down from your Lord with truth. So do not be of those who have doubt. You are commanded not to have, you are commanded not to have doubt. <laughs> you have doubt. It's, look, I am coming to tears in my eyes because I cannot believe that you guys can read this. And you can't, and you don't understand it. The word of your Lord has been completed with truth and justice. There is no changing his words. He is the hearer. He is the knower. <laughs> he knows what you're doing, and you keep doing it. There is no changing Allah's words. He is far... He has given you something so sufficiently detailed. There's no reason to accept anything else at all. And all of you guys keep doing it. Every single one of you. It's, if, there's no, if there is a definition of disbelief or doubt, that is the definition of dif disbelief and doubt. There is no definition that is more, more pertinent to you than that definition. He tells you exactly. He says, all right. I've given you, look, he says, he says, I've allowed there to be enemies. I've allowed them to do this stuff that they want to do. I'm telling you why they do it. They're doing it so disbelievers can be a part of this whole crew, can be recognized in this group. They're going to accept this lie and, and they're going to take of it portions of that that they want. Different portions of that. Then the question is asked, the messenger is saying this to you, shall I seek other than Allah as a judge? He didn't say, I'm your judge, follow my words. He says, shall I seek other than Allah? He doesn't say, shall I seek other than my words? The messenger saying this right here, shall I seek other than Allah as a judge when he has sent down to you this book, this book, sufficiently detailed. Those to whom we have given the book, Know it is sent down from your Lord with truth. Falsehood and truth don't mix. You can't have some of you can't have some of some and some of another and mix it all together and call it truth. No, that is not truth. Allah sent it down with truth, which means that is what you should follow if you are of the righteous who are looking for the and trying to follow the truth. So do not be of those who have doubt. There's no doubt in my heart. There's no doubt in my heart that this is the truth at all. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. It's n nobody. Every, I put the challenge out there to millions of people. Thousands of people have even thought that they can sit here and comment. And they never have evidence. They never have proof.
The words of your Lord have been completed with truth and justice. There is no changing his words. He is the hearer and knower. He knows what you're doing. If you obey the majority of those on earth, they will lead you away from Allah's path. That is because they follow conjure. And that is because they only guess. <laughs> Bukhari and all. I, I could sit here and lie to you and say I appreciate what they've done or what they tried to do. But I can't. Because if they are the ones who compiled all this stuff, if they're the ones who thought it was that important to, to, to get falsehood and conjecture, then they are the they are the jinn and the human devils that were around at least were around the companions. Do not think for a single second that Muhammad didn't have enemies around him. Allah protected him. Allah's protecting me. Do not think for a single second that the, the people who were called the Sahaba don't tell me for a single second that you think that every single Sahaba was a good friend to the Prophet Muhammad. Peace be unto him and to you. Don't think for a single second that you that every single hadith is truthful. Don't sing, don't even don't even give don't even give me this crap that you believe in the science of hadith. We all know what the hadith is. We all know it's called Chinese whispers. It's a game. What does Allah call this? Allah calls this right here. He calls it in 616. That is because they follow conjure. And that is be that is because they only guess. All these people that have these fancy words, this vain speech about hadith, and they talk about how you can implement the hadith. You can they can they can make up this hadith right now. They can make up a hadith about a black man in the United States, a black man in a country far away in the West is going to be speaking out against hadith, and he is the dajjal. They can say that, and you're going to believe it. You're going to say, yeah, that could be a hadith. Who knows? You're not going to accept it, but then you'll go and accept another one right next to it. That, to me, is unbelievable. Unbelievable to me. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. If I'm lying, if there's something wrong with, is my translation wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Is there is there something missing in my heart? If, Am I being brought to tears because of reading the Quran and knowing that there's so many of you who are going to say, well, there's obviously something wrong with this brother's logic or reason. I'm not even using my logic or reason. I'm just reading straight from the Quran. I could have just said that. Just let, I, I could have said that. Said I could have entered with, Salamu Alaikum. I could have read that. Then I could have said, Salamu Alaikum and bounced out. And that would have been it. I would be doing no injustice to you whatsoever by repeating the book of Allah. I'm only coming to you to say these things because you can't deny this. You can't. If you deny a single word of this, if you don't think that this is it, if, if okay, here's the challenge, here's the challenge. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, any of you, any of you at all, any of you, make a video response and tell me why this Quran is wrong or tell me why the translation is wrong. Give me a translation. Give me a translation that says other than this. If you don't, and you continue to go down the path that you go, I do not want to be your friend. I am no longer, I am no longer considering you an ally or a friend. If you can listen to this, if you can see my tears, if you can, if you can see my anger, if you can, if you, you know, all of you know, if you watch any of my videos or you know me personally, I'm one of the most patient people that you will ever come to meet. I am. That's just, it's part of my nature. I'm not quick to anger, but there are some things. There are some things, boy, oh boy, I tell you, this is one of them that just brings me to the end. Chapter 6, 112. Again, we have, we have permitted the enemies of every prophet, human and jinn devil, to inspire each other with fancy words in order to deceive. Had your Lord willed, they would not have done it. You shall disregard them and their fabrications. That is so the hearts of those who do not 
acknowledge or do not believe, the hereafter will listen to it, and they will accept it, and they will take of it what they will. Shall I seek other than Allah as a judge when he has sent down to you a book sufficiently detailed? Those to whom we have given the book know it is sent down from your Lord with truth, so do not be of those who have doubt. The word of your Lord has been completed with truth and justice. There is no changing his words. He is the hearer, the knower. If you obey the majority of those on earth, they will lead you away from Allah's path. That is because they follow conjecture, and that is because they only guess. Any who have eyes, may they see. Any who have ears, may they listen. And any of who, any of you who have a heart, may you feel. I wish nothing but peace and blessings upon all of you. Certain ones of you, I have a strong pull to towards. I have a strong mm, emotional tie to you, and yet you continue to disbelieve. I am willing to obey my Creator, in order to disregard everything everything of falsehood that you bring into my life if you can rehear that and if you can if you can allow that to pass off with casual weight then me and you are no longer friends and I am no longer your ally I wish you the best of peace and blessings but I can no longer call you a friend if you can hear that if you can see that what I just saw and your heart isn't inclined to belief and your heart is still hollow and shallow and wants to accept vain, false, de false fabricated desires and false fabricated words of attribution towards a prophet of greatness, of humbleness, of nobility. And you know that that Quran has his example, it, his example and all the other prophets examples are laced in the Quran, are laced. Prophet Muhammad's example is laced in the Quran. Whose words do you think that was? Shall I seek other than shall I seek a judge other than Allah? Who would say that? But the Prophet Muhammad. You want to know what his words were? You want to know what he did? You just saw that. He just told people not to follow conjure. He just said that. He said that. I said it. He said it. Allah told him to say it. By doing what I'm doing right now, by delivering the message, Qum Fanther. Rise and deliver your warning. By doing this, by reading that ayah, by reading those ayahs and this surah, by making salat right before I do this, by, by making videos, by delivering a message, by being a plain warner, by speaking the Quran, by using my reason, my intellect, I'm, learn, I'm, doing, what Allah, I'm doing what Allah commands the Prophet Muhammad to do, and I'm following his footsteps. Let me tell you a story real quick of using reason of using reason Abraham in the same chapter in chapter 6 Abraham he was talking to his father he said yo dad so uh so you're just going to take these idols as gods and he says yep okay he's like okay I don't I'm not down with this he goes outside and you know he he starts praying and he starts you know worshiping this thing and then he's like oh this thing went away I can't worship that I can't worship I can't worship that which goes away then he starts worshiping the moon. He was like, "Up, oh, the moon went away." Again, if my creator doesn't lead me, if my creator doesn't lead me straight, then I will be of the misguided ones. Then he was like, "Oh, there's the sun. Let me worship the sun. That's much bigger and better." Then he was like, "Wait, the sun just set. If my creator does not will me to worship, then I will never be worshipped. I, I am dedicating myself to the idea of monotheism. I will worship the creator of all of these things." I will worship this I will worship this thing because it creates all things. It is very clear to me that I'm that I'm going to worship the creator of all things because there's nothing that can ever be better than that. Ever be better than the creator. That's coming from Abraham. This is Abraham using deductive reasoning to come to a conclusion of belief. And belief entered his heart and he was of the chosen one. He was Allah's friend. The prophet Muhammad delivered the warning. He received the warning. He got the Quran and said everything in there. When if you want to follow the message of the Quran, if you want to follow the message of Muhammad, then you will follow the Quran. And you will have no doubt in it. If you can have doubt after listening to what I have to say right now, you should you should you should stop what you're doing right now. You should stop paying attention to me. You should go pick up your Quran. 
You should go give it to the next. You should go give it to the most the most honest person that you know. You should walk off of a cliff and jump. Just go away. Just go. You're going to do yourself a favor because at least you won't cause any more corruption and at least you won't be following any more falsehood because you won't be here to do it. Repent. Do what you have to do to repent. I swear by Allah, there is no pride in my heart when it comes to these matters whatsoever. None. If you were to lose all the pride that you have in the vain speech that, and the desires that you have in your freaking heart, if you were just to go and repent to Allah for what you accepted in falsehood, you will be accepted because Allah is merciful and compassionate towards you. Have you no reason? I bear witness in Allah. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And there is no one worthy of my worship but Allah. And I seek his refuge from Satan, from Satan the accursed. And I bear witness that Satan is my avowed enemy. And I will be an enemy to him. Forever. He can pound sand. Whether shaitan is inside my brain, whether the waswasu is inside my head. Every single time me and him are going to battle. And I am willing to take on the battle in order to deliver you the message. That's my job as a believer. Because that's what the Quran says. All praise be to Allah. He's far above what you set up. And all praise be to Allah because he gave us a clear guidance, a very specific warning to a very specific people who have the message. Do not call the people who have never received the message kafirs because they're not the ones who are denying and turning up and covering the truth with their falsehood. What's a kafir? <clears throat> let's, say I have, let's say I have the truth. Let's say I have the truth right here. Here's the truth, okay? Let's say... I say, here's the truth, Allah gave me the truth, and now I'm going to disbelieve by taking something else and by covering this truth up, okay? That is what a kafir does. A person who doesn't receive this can't cover anything up. They never had it to cover it up. A kafir covers. You, we all know the root word of that. We all know the roots. If you know any Arabic, you know that a kafir comes from like like covering like taking a seed of taking a seed of truth and covering the dirt with it and and stopping other people from getting that seed stopping that seed from taking root that is what a kafir is you do not accept that quran if you say that i'm a messenger alhamdulillah you know i i i follow the quran and i follow the sunnah of the prophet and these hadith you have to accept it if you can sit here and you can say and the quran is perfect but you need to con strongly consider yourself. You are who the Prophet Muhammad, Allah, and Teddy 3 in DC is talking about right there. You are that person. Have at it. Have fun. Seek refuge in Allah from Satan and curse. Peace and blessings be to, upon all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shalom. Deuces.